Hello, I'm Mac the Maker, and in this video we're going to be using Tinkercad and Thingiverse to 3D model and print a Crash TIE Fighter to use as terrain for Star Wars Legion. So to get started, I am going to go to Thingiverse.com. If you're not familiar with Thingiverse, it is a free online repository of 3D models that anybody can upload a model to and download a model from. I already know what model I'm going to use, so I don't need to search or anything like that, but by all means, if you haven't used Thingiverse before, it is a great waste of the afternoon to just kind of type in different search terms and see what's available. The model that we are going to use today is a TIE LN that I remixed from Dr. Daniel J. Thomas. Pretty nice model fit pretty closely with Legion. It was off in a couple of the uh, couple axes for dimensions, but uh, nothing we can't fix in Tinkercad. Um, the mesh had some problems with where the wing and the cockpit module joined, so I just threw the file into Mesh Mixer, had Mesh Mixer fix it, and then I re-uploaded it. And you can see here it's got the remix from Tag and the original artist's um, file and everything. I'm going to go ahead and download this file because I know it's good. If you don't know the file is good, if you see something and you just want to download it, I always recommend popping over to the comments. There's nothing in this one, but if there's a problem with the file that other people have run into, most of the time users are pretty good about writing that in the comments or asking the uploader for advice or questions or feedback. So you can sometimes avoid downloading a model that you're going to get 14 hours into and have it fail because there's a problem with the, the mesh. So I'm going to go back, download. I've already downloaded it, so I'm just going to hit cancel. And we're going to go to Tinkercad. If you have not used Tinkercad before right now, I do have a couple of videos uh, on my channel on how to use Tinkercad. I would recommend uh, popping over there and, and getting kind of familiar with the interface before going any further here. Um, I will kind of touch over some of the controls I use, but I'm going to be going into this with a uh, working assumption that you have the basics down for Tinkercad. So this is my Tinkercad landing play page. I'm going to left click create new design. It's going to take a couple seconds here to load. And here we are. First thing I usually do is I always change the file name to whatever I'm working on. So if it crashes or I get logged out or whatever, I don't have to go through 50 or 60 different gibberish names to find out what I'm looking for. So I'm going to write crash tie and hit enter. Then I'm going to come up over to the right and find the import button. I'll left click that and I'm going to click choose a file. I'm going to click on the file I want to upload, or sorry, yep, upload. And before I can do anything else, it gives me a little dialog box telling me that the file name, its size in megabytes, the scale, and the dimensions that's coming in. Now you can edit the dimensions or the scale from right here. I typically don't. I like to see it on the work plane first before I start messing around with stuff. And uh, you'll see that in a couple minutes with the TIE Fighter. So I'm just going to hit import and wait a few minutes while Tinkercad chugs away at this. This part can take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes depending on how many people are using Tinkercad, what your internet speed is, uh, how complicated the model is, how big it is, how many facets it has. So it often can be a good time to, to go get a refreshment, use the bathroom, poke around on your Facebook, what have you. Okay, our file has loaded. First thing I'm going to do is right click and uh, sorry, hold the right mouse button down and move the mouse. It's going to pan my camera around. And I'm just going to look for anything that kind of obviously um, sticks out as not being correct. Got a weird kind of polygon or a mesh line here. Probably not going to be anything, so I'm going to ignore that. One issue that you may have already noticed, and it's a it's an overarching issue with Tinkercad is round things. It does not like high polygon count shapes. 
which circles and spheres definitely are. So you can kind of see on what's supposed to be the, the cockpit glass, you've got some very prominent lines here, some faceting, and the cockpit module itself kind of has this irregular uh, shape going on. Kind of looks almost like a crinkled ball of foil. That will show up in the print, but for what we're using this for is terrain with a couple coats of paint and some weathering on it, it will not be noticeable. So for this, this is absolutely perfect. If we wanted to preserve the polygon count and all that things, uh, we'll be using a mesh mixer to do that. And I will be doing a video, hopefully in the uh, next couple days, which we'll be doing the same process, but using a different model. So I'm going to left click the model to select it. I know it's selected because we've got the blue halo around it and the perimeter box. I want to get this guy standing upright as it were. So I am going to look around and find a curved arrow that kind of looks like it mimics the, the motion that I want to do. And in this case, it's going to be this guy here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. I'm going to left click that arrow and when I do, this protractor shape comes up with hash marks and you also get a degree box. So you can either type in the box if you know exactly what degree you want that to be or you can left click on that double sided arrow and drag your mouse. If you keep the mouse inside the protractor mark it does 22 and a half degree jumps. So 0, 22 and a half, 45, 67, 90 degrees. Since I want 90 degrees that's just fine. If I were to push my mouse outside of that kind of protractor circle, now I get single uh, degree increment change. Um, but again, I just want 90 degrees, so I'm just gonna do that. First thing I notice, bottom of my wings are sticking through the bottom of the work plane. Real quick fix to that is hit the D key, and that stands for drop the model to the work plane. Next, because I kind of want to get the dimensioning down here, I'm going to pull the ruler out because by default there are no measurements here. So I'm going to go up to this top right corner to the ruler icon, left click and hold and drop the ruler on the corner. It doesn't really matter for this where you put it just as long as it's on the work plane. We do that we get some dimension sticking up for our TIE fighter. Now I went to Wikipedia, which is just a fun word to say, and got the dimensions for the TIE LN fighter there and converted them to 148 scale and the models in the ballpark I guess it's probably usable as is it's about a half inch too narrow and about an inch too short to use but since we're cutting the bottom of the model off anyways the height is really not much of a concern but uh, the other dimensions eh, half an inch um, to an inch is kind of noticeable so the first thing I'm going to try is I'm going to just type in the exact measurements to each dimension and see what that looks like. So for the width, we have oh, 133 versus 130, sorry, for the width we have 133.3, I'm going to hit enter, and that's kind of in the wide body model there. And the length is 131 and a quarter, and the height is 156. And let's take a look at that. So the front looks all right. The like cockpit glass, it's a little oval. It's not immediately evident, but it's it's not perfectly round. Um, but where it is is these top and bottom hatches, which should be round. This is completely usable. I doubt anybody's going to notice that the hatch is oval rather than round, uh, but it will bug me. So the other option we can do is I'm going to just undo the three, four apparently shapes and get it back to where it was. And I'm going to pick one dimension that I think is the most important and force the other ones to uh, stick to that uh, aspect ratio. And for that, I think I'm going to go with the width, so 133.3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these corner um, boxes on the perimeter box here, the two-dimension the two 
object manipulator. I'm going to left click and hold, and I'm going to hold the shift key down. And as I do that, it's going to lock the other dimensions um, so we don't get end up getting like a skewed model. And I'm going to drag this. It probably won't get it perfect, but we'll get it pretty close. 133.45. It's off by 0.15 millimeters. Close enough in my book. So now, much more round top and bottom hatch. And other dimensions. So it's a bit longer than it should be and a bit taller than it should be. But that's okay. Like I said we're going to be cutting the bottom off anyway, so that part's not going to be too noticeable. And let's crash this guy. So I'm going to grab this box over here on the top left, top right corner, and drag it down. And I'm going to make sure I get the box that's the gray uh, hole box, I guess would be the best term for it. Because what I want to do is cut the bottom of this off, so I want the box that's already a hole. You can bring the regular box over and then just click hole, but this is much easier. And then I'm going to kind of just grab the object manipulators and drag that box to make sure it's going to encompass the entirety of the model here. That looks good. And then I want to lift that up. So I'm going to pan my camera till I get this little uh, white box kind of floating on, on the top of the uh, larger hole box. There's a lot of boxes going on here. And left click and hold and drag that up a bit. And I'm just going to get it to where it's just touching the bottom of that cockpit module. And you know it's doing it because there's a bit of a shadow in there. I'm going to zoom out. And just like we did when we were flipping the tie over, we're going to flip this box at an angle to kind of cut the tie fighter down. So I'm going to left click that double sided arrow that looks like it's going to do the action that I want. And for this one I'm actually going to push the mouse up and out of the protractor and drag it so it's sticking out. And I'm going to go, uh, I like 18 degrees. I'm going to actually do it the other way because I like that way better. No. Yeah, we're going to do 18 degrees. And now I'm just going to cut the entirety of that wing off the bottom of the cockpit module, some of the arm, and the leg. It's going to leave a little bit of this going on. That's fine. We can fix that. So I'm going to left click over in the white space, clear out our selection, left click and hold and draw the selection box around everything, and make sure it has selected both our whole box and our model. It has. And I'm going to come up here to the top right-ish corner and click on group. And this can take a few seconds as well. And now you can see the beauty of the hole. And then real quick, I'm going to pull another hole box out and just uh, drag it around that kind of orphaned bottom wing there because we don't want that. Don't mess up the hole print. Draw a selection box around everything, group again. And there we go. And then I am going to left click on our curved arrow front again. And I'm going to go to 18 degrees. And hit D for drop again. And now we are sitting pretty on the ground. So that eh, that would probably print. I mean, you're going to end up having a bunch of supports around um, the bottom of the cockpit module and this flight arm here, or this uh, wing arm, which really probably won't be too much of an issue because it's going to be uh, probably glued onto some baseboard or something for uh, terrain base, so you're, you're you'd probably be fine just printing as is. Um, it is a little bit big for some of the smaller printers here. Uh, what do we add here? 154 millimeters. I think the the Troxny X1 and I know the Ender 2 have a 150 millimeter limit on their beds, um, so that might be a bit of an issue. Though I'm 
sure if you were to rotate that a little bit, it would. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So you'll just have to play in the slicer, rotating it to get it to fit. Um, but I do want to kind of show you how to slice something in half, um, split it apart. And the easiest way that I've found to do that in Tinkercad is we're going to pull out our whole box front again and just kind of drag it down somewhere. And I'm going to move it to kind of where I want that seam to be. Just like with uh, resin casting or anything, ideally you would find uh, a panel line or something else where you can hide that seam at. But for this, especially with this giant wing here that has a bunch of detail on it, I don't think we're going to get so lucky. But we might be able to save ourselves some trouble with the wing pylon. So I'm going to just drag that out a little bit and play around with that. The snap grid um, is set for one millimeter, so you can see when I'm kind of moving my mouse, the whole box is, is doing a pretty decent jump. So I'm going to change that to like a tenth of a millimeter, and to do that, kind of towards the bottom right, there's snap grid, 1.0 millimeter. I'm just going to left click on that, and I'm going to click 0.1 millimeters. And now when I click on my whole box and move it, you can kind of see it's, it's moving a little nicer around. I'm going to keep doing that, and I want it to just touch this kind of triangular gusset. And I'm going to drag this all the way across. To do that, I'm going to use this black box, this black object manipulator in the middle of that axis. And I'm going to drag it towards the back and up to make sure we've got everything covered. And I'm going to pull it out on over here a little bit just to make sure. All right. So now I am going to hit, while this box is still selected, I'm going to hit Control D, which is duplicate, and you'll kind of notice a flash and the box getting a little bit darker. The difference between duplicate and copy and paste is paste kind of just plops it in the middle or off to the side of the work plane. Duplicate either drop, duplicates in place, so it's, it's in the same exact place, or if you've done a series of actions like moving it 10 millimeters to the left and then hit D, it'll automatically make, uh, move the next uh, model or pasting 10 millimeters. So it's a fairly useful tool. I'm then going to click the TIE Fighter and hit Control D again. And I'm going to just move it so you can kind of see that there's two there. And I'm going to hit Undo. So in this exact space, there's two models. I'm going to then click our one of our whole boxes and I'm going to grab this middle object manipulator again and kind of flip the box inside out and drag it and now you can see our TIE fighter is bisected by two separate boxes and I'm going to then zoom in Oop, that's fine and I'm going to hold shift I'm going to click the model of the TIE fighter I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to left click one of the boxes here. Looks like that one was already selected, so I'm going to left click that box. And then I'm going to just left click and drag. And I've got two separate models, both being cut in a different spot. Selection box again. I want to make sure I'm just getting these two shapes the, the hole and the tie fighter. I'm going to group it. It'll take a few seconds. Do the same thing over here again, making sure you just get these two models. You don't want to group these things together. And there we go. And then I'm just going to flip these to 90 degrees so they kind of sit flat. Hit D. And hit D. And there you go. You now have a bisected model that you can easily print with a minimum of support. In fact, I don't think you will need a single support anywhere for this. Nope. And depending on what resolution you print, I would probably print this at 0.2 or 0.2524, whatever your magic number is.
for your printer and probably be what eight hour nine hour print maybe glue it together and you will have some terrain I'll actually be doing a series of videos around this model on the next one we'll be actually loading it into your slicer some of the settings I use um, some of the tricks to get a better print using um, we'll probably use Kira I, I personally use Simplify 3D but that is a $150 program so I completely understand why a lot of people don't use it or just can't afford to use it so um, and then we will be taking the printed model gluing it together painting it making terrain uh, basically going through the whole process of the 3D model to a piece of tabletop terrain. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box or send me an email at mac at macthemaker.com. And if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Have a good night.